Live Street Stars. We're here with a, 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 a legend. Yeah. In the nighttime. In the nighttime. Don't make me laugh. Didi in the morning. What's going on? All right. Hey, everybody. Blessings, blessings. Uh, and we, it's funny because we got you at nighttime. I mean, yep. it, like, are you a night owl first and foremost? Yeah. Or? No, actually, I am. Most people who do mornings normally are night owls. We're not morning people. We just get up because we get paid to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, right. so what is your sleep schedule? I'm just curious. Go to sleep. Wake up at what time? Uh, I probably go to sleep on average about 11, 11.15. Wake up at 3.15. 3.15, okay. Yeah. Come oh, home. How Look, do you have a life? I this? don't. That's the thing. I come home, and in the middle of the day, uh, let's see, I get home, and I probably go to sleep, sleep about two and a half hours or so, and then get up and try to act like a wife. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Try to act like, we're going to get into that, because that's the question. Like, how, does, how do you balance that? But for those that are definitely stupid, I'm living on the rock, um, first and foremost, uh, tell us... Uh, where you're from, about your upbringing, and kind of lead us into um, your interest into radio. Let's, let's get that uh, backstory. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm, I was born in Seattle, Washington. Oh, wow. Uh, look, my brother's here. Look, I know he's I like, he can, he can really get it. Look, I'm going to make him sit over here with me because he can interview. You guys can hear all this stuff because you'll know I'm not lying about some things. Wait till I get into my mama. Um, <laughs> uh, no, uh, Seattle, Washington. Then uh, my mom remarried when I was like eight, went to Germany for three years. And then moved to Colleen Ford Hood, you know, and, oh. and that was it. But, but my whole family, I'm the youngest of five, and so our, my whole family is in pretty much in radio. We always wanted to sing, dance, do something with the, you know, in showbiz. It was, mm. it was our thing. So the, expe uh, the expectation was there from the get-go? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because my mom was into it. My mother used to sing. She's the funniest lady we ever met. Um, she's interesting. as an entertainer. So everybody in my family is an entertainer. Is everybody funny? Because you're hella funny. Oh, everybody's funny. Okay. That's everybody's funny. That's what's up. Everybody got a sense of humor. There you go. Do people put respect on uh, Seattle? Um, do you feel like, is that a city <laughs> that people put respect on? Like, I, even, you did from, not. Even, even in the music world. Hold on a second. You did not just do me like that. You, no, said, got, you said anybody put any respect on it. I, no. Damn not it, that it, I know. Because right. uh, y'all had KD, and they just up and took the team. They <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the whole team. We gotta get up out this <laughs> How about Germany? How long did you stay in Germany? How three years. Three years at what age? From? Uh, I was there nine to twelve, I think. Yeah. How was that for you, as far as just having that culture shock? And uh, it was a trip. It was fun, though. I'll tell you this: it was really fun. Great experience. Uh, learned how to speak a little bit of German. You know. Uh, danke, danke. Danke, danke, <laughs> Yeah. Um, learned to speak a little bit, but it was a trip because you know what? They were. It just felt like like when we would go out. And they would say you would go off post, right? You go, um, Andre, what do they used to call it? Wait, real quick, let me ask my brother. What oh, yeah, yeah, Andre, yeah. Huh? The, the economy. You go off to the economy is what they called it back then. And so you would go, and sometimes the Germans would be like talking to you, but they would rub on you, like they rub on your skin to see if it was going to rub off or something. It was weird. But um, no, it was cool. We, we loved it. It was great. Great experience. How do they treat black people down there? You know, I was so young. I, I, I was uh, oblivious to a lot of things. I was in my own little world. <laughs> Now, what we would like to know as far as, you know, K-104, you know, we're Dallas born and raised yeah. um, to where K-104 is really like a family to us. Um, I want to know how, how was your um, entrance into K-104, but before we even go into the entrance, what was your history or what, do you have the history and knowledge of what K-104 was prior to before you came to the company? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How uh, far does that history go back? It goes back all the way back to Tom Joyner. Oh, Wow. I mean, come on now. Yeah. I mean, if you grew up in Colleen Ford Hood, okay. let me tell you something. I, again, I got my brother with me. He's in radio, too. Um, shout out to Michael McGuire. Um, he and I would drive. Like, here we are, like teenagers, right? We would drive uh, to Waco from Colleen Ford Hood. He would drive. I'm sitting in the passenger seat. And we would just drive up just to try to hear K-104, just to listen wow. to K-104. Wow. Yeah. Well, so that was when it was Skip Murphy and company? Skip Murphy and Man, company. Everybody. Like, we would sit yeah. up there. And, and we, and Tom Joyner, everybody, we were such fans of K-104. It was so big that, again, we would drive to Waco just to sit in a parking lot just to listen to the station. That's crazy. Yeah. I yeah. think I remember the episode where Skip Cheatham actually introduced you on the morning show. Yep. Um, at that time, I think it was, I think y'all still had Sam Putney. Sam Putney and, was uh, there. Yeah, had, uh, uh, Chris Arnold. Chris Arnold, yeah. Yep. Uh, Nanette had just left. Nanette, Nanette had left like, maybe two years prior. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they they were going through a change, right? Right. They were um, the ratings were mm-hmm. were messing up a little bit, and I was already nobody knew this, but I was actually doing a national show already. I was on a national show as the co-host for Doug Banks show. Oh, okay. Um, and so basically the producer, White Gary, called me up and said, can you come in and just fill in for Sam, right? This is what he says. He says, Sam Putney has to go to a funeral. Can you come in and fill in for Sam and do the news? And I said, okay. He said, can you do Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? I say, okay. So I go in on a Wednesday. I fill in for Sam, I do the news. And when I get done, I'm thinking, okay, it was fun. Skip Cheatham in the playground. Sam was gone. I do the news. I go home. You know, I'm good. Later that night, White Gary calls me, the producer, and says, uh, get ready. Tomorrow they're going to offer you a job. And oh, I said, damn. yeah, it was like that. And I said, uh, I already got a job. I'm doing afternoons. I don't want to do mornings. I-, I did mornings for years. I'm done. And I said, uh, no, nah, I-, I already got a job. No, thank you. And Gary goes, I'm just letting you know they're going to offer you a job tomorrow. So this is only the first day I was there on a Wednesday. I go in there on Thursday morning. I do the show. They call me into uh, the room. I think it was the operations manager at the time. And he said, we want you to do this. Do you want to do this? I said, nah, I'm not interested. And he said, really? And I said, nah. And he said, well, we really want you to be a part of the morning show. You're what we need, blah, 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 blah. And I kept going, no, I I I love what I'm doing. I'm on a national show in the afternoon. I don't have to get up at 3.15 in the morning. (laughs) Right, right. And, And he wrote a number down. And he said, well, we'll pay you this. And he wrote it down. <laughs> and it's like out of a movie, I swear to God. He slid that number, what he wrote on a piece of paper across his table. And he said, here, this is what we'll pay you. And I picked it up. Damn, that's your. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, maybe. Well, yeah, well. Maybe. So, right. So I called my brother. Got my attention. Look, I called my brother because, again, he, he runs radio stations. So he knows all of this. So I call him up and I go, should I do it? I said, because I really don't want to. I'm telling him I don't want to do it because I'm like, I did mornings. I'm tired. I don't. He says, "Come on, why not? You might as well make some money in your backyard. Like it's your back. You're, you know what I mean. I'm. People didn't know I was living here for over ten years, and what? we were on in New York, on WBLS in New York. We were on in Chicago, Houston. We were on all over the country. And nobody knew that I was living here for ten years doing that. Wow. How, yeah. how did you do that? Yeah, how, how so you were working remote, basically. No. So syndication at the time. Um, it was Tom Joyner was across the hall, got you. and I was over there across the hall. We were at ABC, so we, we worked across the hall. Got you, got and you. So basically, uh, ABC Network was based here for a while, and so that's how I was able to do it. And nobody knew, and I could go out, and it was great. Nobody had no idea, but on the weekends, here I am. I'm in New York. I'm all over the place doing what I do. That's and so once we stopped doing mornings, I was like, mm, I don't want to do it until they slid that number across. <laughs> so I I gotta ask though now. Um, you know, Skip Cheatham for a lot of people was, you know, he was a real big figure in the city. He had, you know, the, sh- the TV shows, all that good stuff. Um, when he got let go, uh, was it a plan already for you to already take over or that's just something that happened? No, because what y'all ain't realizing is that when they let Skip go, um, they brought in another guy by the name of Buck Wild. I remember that. So Buck Wild came in. Buck Wild lasted five or six months. And so because they realized he just wasn't a good fit for the radio station, um, they ended up just saying, well, we know that Didi has the experience because before I did syndication, I had already worked in San Antonio, Chicago, um, Philadelphia. I had already done my own show for so long. And they were like, well, she has the experience. Her resume says this girl has been blah, 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 blah. And when uh, I was doing the national show, the host of the show ended up sick one time. He was sick and he was out for almost two months. And I took over and the ratings went up. So they were like, well, she got the resume. Let's give her a shot after Buck Wild. So it wasn't like it went from Skip to me. There was an interim. And then they didn't even call it Dee Dee in the morning. They called it the crazy morning show or something like that. The crazy ass morning show. I was, I was That's what they called it. I was going to ask because uh, it seemed like with Buck Wild, because they did that whole thing where everybody's trying to figure out what he looked like and they was offering a certain amount Man, of money. I remember. Uh, but he just did never catch. And did you, did you know that? Did you see that part, like that he wasn't fitting into the actual mode of what it would be? Because it didn't seem like he was that much different from Skip. But it just was like someone there. I didn't think. Let me tell you why. Because one of the things you know, when you do radio and if you professionally look at it, 
Trust and believe me. You know, I always say this. You know, when you look up, Steve Harvey is a success. Steve ain't from Dallas. Steve ain't from right. Chicago. But Steve can work nationally anywhere. Ricky Smiley ain't from Dallas, but, but Dallas embraced him, right? right? It doesn't matter. Everybody likes to say that. But if you can get on the radio and just embrace the city, be funny, be, you know, connect, you're good. You know what I mean? Like, and so for me, I was trying to give the man a chance. But Dallas is a different beast. Dallas said bye. <laughs> Dallas was like, Dallas be on yeah, hey, da- you know when they always say if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Yeah. I think they lying. I think if you can make it in Dallas, you can make it anywhere. Cause, cause Dallas is hardcore when it comes to radio, y'all boy. No, but yeah, so real. Dallas hated him. So at that point, they realized it and put him overnights, and then I just filled in. And once I filled in, then they gave me the full, the full time later. So. Now, we got to clap it up for you because I think you are the only woman that has a syndicated radio show, correct? Morning show. Well, she said, well, I was one of the first. Okay, you're the one. But whoever whoever said it ain't fucking with you. But anyway, so how does that feel like like when you when you actually because you step into this role, right? Obviously, you got big. You had Skip Murphy, then Skip Cheatham. You know them, the Buckwild and you. So, how did it feel when you actually got in there and you actually excelled and everybody loved you? You know, the chemistry was dope. How did that feel to actually be like, damn, I'm really doing that? Um, I I gotta be honest with you guys, I never thought about it. I don't think about it. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm so busy just trying to get up in the morning to be on time. <laughs> I am so busy trying to make sure that this show is a success that I'm not paying attention to anything else other than that. The goals for me are so big. You know, my mom used to always say to me that when you hit a goal, you need to make another goal and another goal. So I'm so goal oriented and so goal driven that I'm not, some days I think to myself, I'm not celebrating enough, but I feel like the celebration will come. Right now I'm too busy focusing on a goal. So, you know, and you have to be careful of getting caught up in hearing the the applause. You gotta be careful, because that applause will get you, you know? Um, you know, fame and, and attention is a drug. And so you got you to gotta balance that out real well. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm just trying to get this show to be the greatest it can be. I, we ain't no time for celebrating. And... What are some of the things that you've sacrificed besides sleep to make sure that this show is successful? Uh, I used to sacrifice relationships, but now I am married. I sacrifice kids. I don't have kids, you know. Um, all right, thanks for asking. No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know if I would have been a great mama. I don't know. No, but I really did. I mean, I think maybe I would have. I don't know. I got to a point where I just said, you know, you, you live your life and, and yeah, you like, I'm, I'm having a good time. But um, I, you sacrifice time with family. I remember being in Philadelphia on the radio. I had no family in town. My mom comes to town for Thanksgiving, right? My mom and my stepfather, my sister, everybody comes to town for Thanksgiving. And do you know they made me work from two to six that afternoon? You know, how, you know, black families, we eat. I don't know if y'all mamas do this. Your mom be like, Thanksgiving dinner's going to start at three. You'd be like, what? Yeah. They had me at two to six. Damn. So here my family had flown in, and now I can't spend time with them. There's been a lot of sacrifices and holidays that, that I miss because of radio. So. And I'm curious, the, the I Love School song, that don't make you just want to have a little? Not at all. Okay. Okay. Hey, Dee Hey, Dee Dee. That song, hey, that I love school song. Hey, that song been around since Skip Murphy, hasn't it? Since y'all were like, what, in fifth grade? I was driving school in the video. Hey, Dee, I'm going to just jump right in. Okay. You talk about sacrifices and everything that you had to make. For women like us who are trying to break into the industry, we got to know, did you have to sleep with anyone to get to where you are? Girl, I didn't have to sleep with anyone. I slept with everyone. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. (laughs) I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I didn't have to sleep with anyone. And I, would, I refuse to, because let me tell you, I felt like my talent was good enough. If my right. talent is good and you believe in your talent, you ain't got to sleep with nobody. Just work hard. That's all you got to do. And I never, that wasn't my thing. I'm not going in trying to entice anybody, trying to be cute. Don't, y'all, y'all see how I do it? So I mean, how I, do you deal with the pressure? You have all of these people coming on the show. You have all of these artists, you know, these high names. How do you deal with the pressure? I'm sure you're a beautiful woman, so I'm sure you get hit on. Oh, no, no. I'm not beautiful in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> But you do a lot of events and you're on a lot of things where you're really on the front line for the station. So how do you, I know you're married, right? Mm -hmm. How do you fight it off? 
Um, I don't have to fight. Trust and believe me. I never had to fight anybody off. No <laughs> one was chasing me, sweetie. Now, they used to chase Jade when she was on the show. They chased the hell out of her, but I'm good. Mm -mm. Okay. I ain't had no issues. I ain't had no issues. Now, speaking of Jade, I, I want you to be able to s sit down and, you know, throw those flowers out there because y'all had a relationship for how long as far as working together? Gosh, over 12 years. Over 12 yeah. years. Y'all had a, y'all, y'all was, <laughs> what's they call it, work, a, a work wife? Work, yeah, yeah, work, sure. <laughs> how was, how was, uh, the overall chemistry with you and her and how, like, as far as good was she when it comes to doing this radio stuff and, again, to be able to give her flowers. Okay, so you're going to make me sad. Come on, oh, man, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that, man. But, again, K104 is a family and we hear her voice every day. We hear y'all's chemistry. And, again, I just want to be able to say, like, you know, the flowers where flowers deserve, just how, again, important was she to um, just your, <clears throat> to your come up? Well, I'll just say that, um, you know, again, it, it's um, it's unfortunate. It's sad. I'm getting sad now thinking about it. Every time I, I think some days, I, I mean, you know, I have a breakdown or whatever. Um, she, you know, I, I wouldn't be here too without her. She was a big part of it. She was. Um, see, I'm getting. What's that? Take your time. Take your time. Take your time know. with it. Yeah, take your time. I don't know. Let yeah. her tell it. I'll let her tell it, right? You, I'll, um, you know, anytime I say something, you know, I've been accused of not giving her the opportunity to say it. So from here on out, I'm choosing just to say, you know what? I love her. I wish her well. She's, you know, whatever she needs. If she ever needs anything from me, I got her. But if you guys want to know what happened, that's up to her to tell. That's not my story. That's hers. And, um, you know, that's all I can say about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the things I always never understood about radio is like, what with her, y'all actually gave her a send off. But I remember Junebug, he was gone and just he was just gone. Like, <laughs> did nobody say shit? They and, just and, and by the way, I'm glad you said that, right? So, so here's the thing: when we gave her a send off, and I want everybody to understand, Jay did resign. Okay, she resigned, and and when when we gave her the send off, we didn't know where she's going. What you said about Junebug, let me tell you what they do in radio normally. If somebody resigns, we don't know where they're going. If they're going to our competition, do you think we're getting ready to, oh, yeah. to give them love if they get ready to go up against oh, us and be our love here. Right, right, we're not going to do that, right? And, but we did do this. I wanted to do this for Jade. This is my girl that I thought all these, we did that. And I was accused of not letting her say something, right? Okay. So, but they do do that because we're not quite sure. And one of the reasons why they do that, and sometimes you don't know what's going on, is what if you tell somebody... Um, you know, we no longer want you to work here. Now they get on the air and they say something live on the air, either about the company, they cuss, they do this. You jeopardize the position of the radio station. So business says normally, if you say you don't want to work here or they're getting, they don't let you say nothing right for there. fear of you ruining, you know, that's business says, I can't let you get on the air. I don't know what you're getting ready to say. Um, so, so again, that's why that happens sometimes, right? It depends on how they they fell out, but this one wasn't, we wanted people to know, and we wanted Jade to know how we felt, but again, she-, she So there's no bad blood with nope, you and Jade? Not from me, not from me. Great. Okay, well, we appreciate that. Now with Michael Sean. Not with Michael Sean either. Okay, we heard, we were hearing the streets were saying he had a drinking problem. And he said it, and he did. He got on the air, and we talked about it on the air. Michael Sean talked about it. He has struggled with alcoholism, um, uh, and you know, it's a disease. And right. You know, it's sadly, you get one drink, it's over. Anybody will tell you, if you're an alcoholic, you get one drink and it's done. And we talked about it on the air with Michael Sean. I love working with Michael Sean. I hated that he had to go. Um, but once we became syndicated, you have to understand, and people don't even understand this too in Dallas, we have 60-something other stations that we have to answer to. 60-something bosses I have to answer to. You know, uh, uh, listeners I got to answer to. So if somebody's on the air slurring, I ain't going to be, I mean, how do I answer that? Like that's, and right. they're expecting, they're paying for our show and they're expecting a level of professionalism. So Michael Sean, he knew it and he'll tell you he messed up. And he and I still talk to, we talk to this day. Now, do you have any vices? Who, me? Mm -hmm. uh, I smoke, <laughs> I no, drank. <laughs> I'm no, supposed no, to stop, no, but no. I can't. <laughs> I drink. <laughs> I drink. This is one vice. I drink. Uh, I'm obsessed on Instagram. I stay on that. And I love edibles. 
Oh, I love Delta now you got to get me. Now it's over the counter. I do over the counter edibles oh. Delta 8. Hey. Y'all got to get into that Delta yeah. 8. Yeah. Hey, yeah. now you have to give me an edible story. Because no. everybody that be on edible be having <laughs> some boost. Okay. I was on an edible. Uh, one of the edible stories was I was so messed up and I was so high that I went into the bathroom, uh, to the ladies room at a restaurant. And, and somebody had come out of there before me and she looked suspicious to me. Oh. So once I got in there, my paranoia set in. <laughs> So I looked in the bathroom. I start pulling in. It was one of the old ones. I pulled up the top of it, looking in, make sure it wasn't a bomb in there. I all of a sudden, hold on. I, Listen. This is, this is how crazy it was. So I'm now looking, and I'm like, I pee a little bit, and then I get up. Y'all know we put our hands down first because we don't want to, you know, they didn't have whatever. So when I get up, I turn, and I go, well, if I flush this toilet facing it, and it blows up, shrapnel, this thing going to get in my face. <laughs> I'm thinking about the shrapnel. Right. <laughs> the, Wait, so I, I turn my head and I flush it because I'm scared that whatever is going to come out is going to like maim at me oh, yeah, and you cut high. me up. You high. Ooh, now, now, the hey, was so calm. now, the same thing happened to me. Man, I was in Vegas one time. I took an edible and I thought someone stole my wallet because so many people. So I turned off and I turned around and started chasing someone that was not there. And I, oh, my, my wallet's on me. I'm like, oh, I got to. Yeah, we. That was the first time I tried it. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, that was a, that might have been it. And I'm curious, um, how was it for you as far as, you know, everybody always wonder how competition works. You mentioned competition earlier as far as going there. Uh, 97.9 is the other hip-hop station, of course, K104. And Thank you. How, yeah, how, how, does it, how, does it, how does it work when it comes to um, events that both y'all, both y'all might be at? I know, like, the MLK Parade, there's things like where, like, do y'all have working relationships? Is it more so like, hey, it's on site? You know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, some, like, was it a... Let me tell you what, like, maybe... Like, like the Anchorman. No. <laughs> like, I think back in the day, maybe it was more like that back in the day, but not now. I'm going to tell you why not now. Because any minute, we all going to go over to each other. You know, if... if look, at Jay Cruz is over there with us now, right? Right, right, and right. so nowadays, we all trying to get that check, right? So why am I going to sit up there and hate on them? I mean, we have a, a fun competitive... There's a competitiveness that's there... But shoot, if, if K104 told me tomorrow, bye, Didi, I'm going to go knock on it. Y'all got a job? Because I ain't set up like that. I got to get paid. So I'm going <laughs> to go over there and get me some money. I'm sorry. but Now, yeah. the, oh, now right now, you've been trying out people on the radio yep. show. We've been hearing different voices. Three people came from our platform, by I the know, way. You were telling Shout me Shout out Keita Rose. Keita Rose. C. Rich. I love her. Uh, Lil D. She, Lil was, D. she was on it. Um, all dope. Um, what do you personally look for when you're building a team in chemistry, right? Like when you're doing a morning show, what do you personally look for? So what I'm looking for when I, look, when I think about, um, first of all, people got to remember a show is similar to, uh, let's say, a sitcom, right? Right. Um, if you're watching, uh, like back in the day, people would like, watch Friends or Martin or what, everybody has a role that they play and everybody has a lane. Everybody should be in their own lane. Everybody right. got a lane. And so for me, what I'm looking for is somebody who's able to work with all of us, who's able to have uh, chemistry with all of us, from me to JJ, J. Cruz, even to our producer, right here. Everybody has to get along, number one. I want everybody to get along. I want a good attitude. I want, um, I'm looking for a person who has an opinion. I want a person who has a sense of humor. Talk to him. You know what I mean? Somebody who doesn't take themselves so seriously. Yeah. Um, and I really, really want somebody who is a, the polar opposite of me. I, I, I'm like... I need you to be totally opposite of me and not afraid to even challenge me either. Has anybody's I mean, family life ever had to interrupt and, you know, come up to the radio station and, like, cause any havoc or? Not on this show, no. Okay, okay, just making sure, just making sure. Think. Yeah, ain't no, yeah, ain't not on this show. Now, now it, look, now other people on the radio now, <laughs> other shows. Who are you leaning? Not on. So do you know who you leaning towards picking? Huh? Do you know who you're leaning towards picking? I don't know. We don't know. I'll be honest with you. We really don't. I don't know. I mean, every day somebody comes in different and they bring something that I didn't know or brings out something different and somebody else in the room. It's been fun, to be honest with you. It's been real fun to do it. Right. I got to be honest with you. I've, been, I've enjoyed it. Do you have it the final so say-so? Who? Do you Me? have the final say-so? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Do you and do you have a favorite? No. Good. I don't have a favorite. Keep it orthodox. 
Huh? You ever had a fire in the gas? <laughs> no, y'all don't understand. That's not me. Like, that's not, I'm not, okay, hold on a second. If you had a fire somebody, no, how would you do it? No, hold on a second. It? Now, I want to be, no, no, this is the thing. I'm still, in, in, I'm an employee of oh. service broadcasting K104. Gotcha. Now, do I want to do what uh, uh, Tom Joyner did back in the day? Do I want to own my own show? Hell yeah. Do I want to create my own uh, podcast network like Charlemagne the God did? Yep. Do I want to be yeah. one of the first females? Hell yeah, I want to do it. Yeah. But right now, everything I'm an employee like everybody else. So when people are saying, Didi did, Didi, y'all, I don't own that radio station. I don't run it. I'm not the program director. Okay. I'm the morning show host. And shout out, and shout out the dope podcast. We were on that. Uh, you're building yep. your brand. You got some trouble, Didi. Yeah, Why? You got some uh, trouble, nigga. Yeah. You got yourself in trouble. He was talking crazy. Oh, my lap. Oh, my oh, lap. My lap. Oh, yeah, that. How, how build, like building a brand outside of radio, um, we look at someone like Bebe who like is building brands outside of radio. How is that for you as far as building your name outside of what K104 provides for the syndication? And do you have to still keep them, and do you still have to keep them in mind when doing so? Like, do you need approval? Like, I want to start this podcast. It's not connected to K104. It's uh, mine. Do uh, you need approval from the station? Not anymore. I made sure I did it in my contract. I know that's right. <laughs> it's in the contract for me. It's in the contract. No, but I'm just saying, honestly, um, you know, it, 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 it's very important that people pay attention to their contracts. There's some things that I didn't do the last time that I'm going to do this next time, right? Things I didn't know. So I took a long time doing my podcast because I wanted to own it. Had I not put that in my contract, I wouldn't have owned it. The station would have. Wow. You, you get what I'm saying? So there's certain things, and there's a reason why now I see there's a process and why people will say, well, why isn't she doing this or why didn't she? Because... I'm trying to make sure that I'm trademarking, LLCing, right. uh, making sure contracts. You know, now you get to a point where, you know, we're, again, we're in 60-something cities, almost 70 cities. It's a whole different ball game that I had never been in. Like, I was the co-host, not the host. So now I'm seeing, whoa, there's so much more to this. Because a lot of people don't know you were in the Best Man movie. No. So. I was 12. With that being said, like when you offer those type of deals, how does that, like, or is that in your contract now too? Like, I have, have to you get now a, incorporated that? Um, I used that? to have to get approval, now I don't. Wow. Now big, I don't. Big DD, that's what they right, call so. it. So, as I was asking, um, with Dallas music and Dallas artists, um, where they expect to be on radio, they expect to be, uh, you know, be on DD in the morning, have interviews, get music played. Um, what is the business behind artists getting to your attention and not and what artists do you mess with in the city damn that's a good yeah. one can i be <clears throat> honest with you i'm too sleepy oh, i ain't shit. going no goddamn way <laughs> it all comes down to rest at the end of the day hey, no, like, nigga, I mean, never, no this is the thing people don't even realize you don't see me out hardly anymore once we went once we after about this had to be about four years ago once we went syndicated syndicated yeah and we had to be up think about it the east coast it is 6 a.m it's five o'clock our time Right? And the show starts at 5 on the East Coast. I'm up at 4. You don't see me out anywhere. It's very rare. That's the reason why we brought Jay Cruz on, because we like his connection to the street. That's right. why we have Street Swag, right? <clears throat> we have Mr. Hit That. Those are the ones that are going to make sure that we are in the community. We're finding out who the, the, the people who are coming up. The, you know what I'm talking about? Like, so that's what that is. Me, myself, I'm in, the, I'm in this sleep, y'all. I'm trying right, my damn. Them, oh, hey, hey. I do. No, I have to. Yeah, I have to. I do. I love. I love music, girl. I love radio. Do you think? But but as far as like radio in general, do you think there is a responsibility for the radio stations to cultivate some of these artists that are doing millions of views organically, or they're getting rotation in the club? Should the radio be jumping behind it and I adding feel to the? So. Yeah. I do. I think we all did. Everybody at the radio station. But again, we have a program director who has a different mindset. You know what I mean? That has. That's why I keep saying we don't run it. We. You know, we'll go in until our, you know, I mean, shoot, Breeze is here. My assistant producer, Breeze, he'll tell you, he'll go in and tell our, our program director, Geo Cook. So, question. So when y'all have an issue, go, don't we, we go in there all the time, everybody. And we try to tell him, do this, play this. Do. You worked Deaf in ears. Chicago. Uh -huh. You were, lived in Seattle, yep. I believe. Uh -huh. You worked in Philly. Is Dallas radio so different? How different is it from all of those? I mean, Chicago, that's the, that's, that, that city's a beast. Girl. Uh, it ain't no, honestly, to me, radio is radio, number one. It is a business. It's whatever. Um, um, I just think that uh, Dallas listeners love radio harder than anybody, any other city I have ever encountered. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we, we take I'm it all lying. in. We the take Dallas it all in. Dallas listeners 
love radio. Yeah, we take it all Love in. their radio personalities. Rock with us like crazy. I've never seen it like that. We take like, it all That's what I, I will say. Yeah. So in your time frame of being on radio, who would you say is the most played artist that, in your time frame that you've seen? Drake. Drake. Are, Lil Wayne. Are you tired of... Drake. First it was Lil Wayne. Okay, then it went was... to Drake and Chris Brown. Mm. So now pretty much Drake and Chris Brown. Yeah. Do you get tired of... Um... No, no. Hold on a second. Right now, for a while, Pop Smoke... Oh, yeah. Oh, he was going. Man. Post-humans, Pop Smoke was going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. Now, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Drake, Drake and Chris Drake. Brown. Drake. Do you feel like, <laughs> just as a... From a radio personality standpoint... It does any Drake song just do they just make it go? What do you mean? Like as far as it might be the song that you might not like, but because radio is programming, it's gonna grow on you. It's gonna. Oh yeah, All, a lot of songs grow. Well, yeah, a lot of songs grow on you. Shoot, Beyonce, you won't break my soul song. Yeah, song grew on, did it? Yeah, I didn't know about that at first. Did know it grow on you? I didn't know about it. But, but it's, it's, and then you hear it, you you, you find. Like, Hold on, you find yourself wiggling to that shit, don't you? I still, even as a grown ass man, you be like, you ain't my stuff. <laughs> and you mad at yourself as a man. Y'all yeah. be sitting here singing that. I know that you say in the morning that you may not look your best or you're not on top of your game or whatever, but we know you're a beautiful woman. How many times has an artist tried to holler at you? None. None. That's cap. That's cap. That's cap. I'm going to tell you why it's cap. Because I heard Rick Ross coming there and flirt with you the whole morning show. <gasps> No, I was flirting with him. Hey! I was. Say, no, let me tell you why. I told Rick Ross I was going to lick his belly, right? No, no. Oh, oh no, the image is there no, now. No, it was a running I can't joke. See it. No, it was a running joke. No, hold on, y'all. I swear to God. Hold on. And, 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 and I got to be honest with you. It was a running joke on the air. I used to be on the air and I'd be like, oh, I love me some Rick Ross. And when he come in one day, I'm going to lick his belly. I'm going on and on and on. Well, this Negro came in. But here's the messed up part. He had came in from being at the strip club club. He hadn't gone home to sleep yet, right? So when he's in there, and you know, Rick is a larger man at the time. Uh, everybody said, Rick, Dee Dee said that she was going to lick your belly. And so now at this point, so then Jade eggs me on, right? Because she, she goes, lick his belly, then Dee Dee. Dee Dee going to lick your belly. So at this point, I'm, I have to do it for the radio, right? It's been my bit. I've been saying it for over a year. Rick, come here, I'm going to lick his belly. Promise to God. I got down on my knees, and I was sitting there, and I'm a married woman, but I said, I'm going to do this for the show. Oh, there you go. And I got down on my knees, and I was like, raise up, your belt, raise up your shirt, Rick. And I was trying until our producer, White Gary, walked over to me and whispered in my ear. He goes, he ain't been home, and he's been out all night sweating, and his White, belly. White Gary, the hater! Where was the HR department? White Gary, the Get Gary, the, what is the HR department? Gary said, God he said, damn. you gonna get something else, you gonna lick on that belly. He was like, yeah, he was like, you, you, no. you gotta get up, get up. Shout and out, I was like, Gary, okay, bro. okay. But I was gonna Mark do Gary it, blocked, I just want y'all to know. Gary block that one. God damn, full, 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 full Matumbo, full, no, 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 no. Come on, why Gary, God damn. I was going to do it, though. Was there, any, was there any cameras on at the time? Yeah, cameras are on. We okay. got it on camera, we got it on yeah, camera. You would have went viral. You I mean, would have went viral. I was going to lick. You would you would you would have tasted that wing stuff. You yeah, still, you still go you still gonna go viral. Hey, it may not have been wing stop. We don't know what it was now. Now um, some smegma or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't know, but now Dee Dee, you don't know. I don't know. You cool? You like like kicking it with one of the fellas? You, have you ever shot your prior to you being married? Uh, have you ever shot your shot at somebody? Have I ever what? Shot your shot at a uh, at a man? Oh yeah, all the time. Or why married? Oh, no, I know. I, I, you know what, girl? I ain't cheated. You an honest woman? I know that's right. Speaking about this man. I ain't cheated, girl. So he's younger than you. Mm -hmm. How much younger? A lot. Okay. No, I'm not. Either. Like five we years? We joke about it, yeah. Five years? Okay. Yeah. Five years is, is a lot for a man when you're talking about a woman and a man comparable. So did you have to fine-tune him to get him exactly how you wanted him to be? No. Did you have to put it? So he just came packaged that way. You know what he is? He's a nerd. He's a... Girl, that's the secret. <laughs> Get you a nerd. I had one of them. It didn't work that way. Well, he was too smart. He was too smart for he you? caught on to a lot of stuff <laughs> that I was hiding. <laughs> he was very intelligent. Get your ass off the mic. He paid attention to detail. So, 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 so let's go there, man. I'm curious on your thoughts on uh, 
uh, and I don't want to say polygamy or nothing like that, but uh, you see a situation like you see a situation like Diddy and Carisha, where they're both single, but they're both in an entanglement, I guess, and it's kind of this open relationship that's that's secluded, that's inclusive, that's exclusive. I don't. What is your thoughts when you see a new relationship like that? What P Diddy and Carisha is doing? They look like me personally when I watch it. First, I ain't feeling it. I ain't believing it. Yes, and, there's more to it that there. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Carisha is. Be, hey, Young Miami got that body she right now. Right she hey. got it together, right? Hey, she got it right. She got it well, right. Hold on. She Have you ever right. seen Diddy's women? Uh, like Casper. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all, they all. Like Casper. Have you ever seen the one he got the baby with down in Atlanta? Very thin, Say, very not giving. She He's looks so totally nothing. different from every woman I didn't ever see Diddy he, with. He's tapping into his he playing, age. I feel like it's a. They plan it for for a PR for it's, some reason. It's not I think the payola. it held both of them. It just feels like a PR situation to me. I just watch it. I'm just like, eh. yeah. Your, your, your you. thoughts on your thoughts on BBLs and getting ass put in. Love it. Um, love it. Do you feel like young girls who are maybe let's say 16, 17, 18, that haven't really gotten a gym yet, should take the cheat code and just go straight to BBL? Yep, if they want to. Okay, they can go. God damn it. I mean, I a hate man, to say a that. man no, will pay. A man no, will pay. No, honestly, I, I got to be, I mean, 16 is really young. They be thinking about they, it, though. Come on, they get nose jobs. And little, look, them little white girls back in the day when you were in school were getting nose jobs that and everything true. else, y'all. That is true. You're getting braces, straighten your teeth when you get older. You're doing this and that. I mean, if the parent lets them go do it, go do it. But that is true. I have, I have, it does change. But, I mean, you know, you could take it out. Look at the Kardashians. Them kids. Kim and them, hey, Kim and them, all of a sudden, they look like little white girls again. Their booties is just a small. What's happening? Because it, it was a fad, and we shouldn't make, I think really we should be careful about making our bodies a part of a fad. That's the thing. Yeah. So, right. To, to, to love themselves. Right, yeah. because it's a fad. Teaching little girls to love themselves. Yes, yes. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, he's like, he's um, like, screw all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, screw you know, that. Got to get to the shits, man. Um, you know, you, you being a radio personality, you see something like um, uh, Dallas is on Charleston White going in and on about T.I., and they're going back and forth, and you're seeing this, I mean, you're seeing this just, this pity pat going back and forth with the kids, the sons, there's kids, it's a lot involved. Who's, what are your thoughts from a radio standpoint for, like, content that... What, my thoughts? What are... What are your thoughts when you see that as far as a, a Charles and White, a T.I., you know, the kids involved, Bo Boosie? From a radio standpoint, what are your thoughts when you see that? From One of my thoughts as a radio person, I'll be yeah. like, God dang it, yes. Yeah, was it? Is this Shit, a content yeah. that I got something to talk about? What? <laughs> what? Now, have, you ever had to back anything, have you ever had to back anything that you say up? Like that you said on air? Like yeah. maybe you I misspoke or spoke. I'm gonna back to everything I say up, really. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'll be like, yeah, I said it, and whether it's raggedy and you all don't agree, I really don't care. I gotta be me. If I say it, I'm gonna say it and I gotta I gotta own it. Um, but I do like, uh, I like Charleston, y'all. I like him. Oh, yeah, nah, he, he's unapologetically Charleston. I like him, and I'm okay with it, right? Um, um, he gives us stuff to talk about on, on the morning show. You know, I often tell people, there are people who get mad at me. I think somebody's mad because I just talked to Charleston, right? Yeah, yeah. And they were like, why give him a platform? Well, why not? I want to hear what he got to say. I want to see what's going on. And here's the other part I get so tired of. One of the things I learned about him is doing the interview the man is telling you what he's doing. He's playing a game. And if mm -hmm. you listen to the whole damn interview, you will understand what he's doing. And it's genius. It's what all the other artists are doing to us today. everybody got a game and a gimmick. Right. everybody got to get off that, you know, judgmental. I can't believe. Stop all that bullshit and listen to the man, what he's saying. So. Now, he said he was upset that that Atlanta radio stations got him on there before Dallas radio stations got really? him Really? Yeah, he said, he said that kind of hit. You know, and that's, you know, he politics. didn't ask me. See, oh, see, Charleston. Charleston didn't hit me up. Yeah, he didn't hit up Breeze, right. who works with us. Right. He didn't hit. He didn't hit me up. I yeah, mean, calls, you sometimes closed mouths don't get fed, Negro. I mean, I don't know. I mean, no. I didn't know. But I was anxious. I was good. I'm, I told the man to come back. I said, when you want to come back again? He said he gonna come up, and he even said he meet Ti up there. Hey, I told. Let me tell you what I told him. Brown. Hey, Brown. Let me tell you what I told him. You can use this studio anytime you want. I mean, here's the thing. That's what I'm saying. All you got to do is reach out. People be scared to reach out. I think you know, and they think if you don't see me out, you either think I'm living in an ivory tower or a hot. Yeah, he looks a 
apartment. Right, in the sky. God damn it, you didn't made me <laughs> the Jeffersons. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. You don't see me because I'm up at three o'clock every morning and the responsibility is huge. I'm the, I'm the lead of a show. I'm not the co-host no more. I gotta set and live by example. I can't be in the club up until 11 o'clock, come up in the show, you know, at three tired and other stations around the country are mad. So you're not seeing me. It's not because I don't wanna be, but I got responsibilities, right? And I'm trying to do something so that this female here and any other female is gonna say, I got a chance. So I gotta take it seriously, unfortunately, but it doesn't mean that I ain't supporting or y'all don't see me, I think I'm better. I got to get my sleep because I'm, I'm trying to do something that's bigger than. Yeah. What would we have to do to get Charleston on the morning show? Shit. Shit. <laughs> I won't. Hey, let me tell you something. I liked him so much. He can come on tomorrow. I'm telling you, I liked, I liked his honesty, his fun, the way he approached things. He was smart. He was well read. That's the kind of that, that makes for a great morning person, to it be does. honest with it you does. guys. That makes for you got to know a lot about a lot of dumb shit. You got to know a lot about, I got to read, I get into the station, I'm reading the Drudge Report, Daily Mail, I'm mm. reading Strange Activities, right. I'm reading Baller, <laughs> I'm reading The Shade Room, uh, I'm Quire. Like It Hot, The Neighborhood Talk, I mean, right. it runs the gamut, but I'm going to read everything, and there's very rarely, you're going to find somebody come in, and I don't know what the hell they're talking about, because I'm reading everything. There you go, man. So that's why you probably ain't seeing me out either. Yes, That'd be wild if he was a co-host of the morning. <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, so I, I'm curious on your thoughts. Um, you're in the same world of uh, Wendy Williams. Oh, and yeah. you see a situation where, of course, what she goes through as far as just what she's done for so many years. And you do the same thing. You wake up at a, such a time and you're, you, like you said, the weight of the world of all these stations and being nationally syndicated. Um, do you understand as far as what she's going through, possibly as far as what the normal person may not see what someone deals with and have to kind of cope with just not only the celebrity lifestyle, but just okay. that work schedule. All right, here, here I'm going to talk on Wendy Williams. And here's what I think about Wendy, and I've said this on the air. Uh, I used to work with Wendy in New York on WBLS. Oh, <clears> she oh. did afternoons. I was on in the morning with the co as the co-host. Even though we were based in Dallas, I would go to New York two weeks out of the month. Mm. And I'll never get one time I go there, and um, there was some big con. Something was going on in our listening party. And Wendy was in her car waiting. They had a car service or whatever. And I said, hey, girl, you know, I'm walking into the building. She's sitting in the car. I said, girl, you going to go to the, to the after party? She's like, no. She said, I got a son. I'm going home. I don't do that. I'm sending interns. I said, okay. She said, I ain't going to do that. I'm going home. I'm watching my TV. You know, she was regular ass, mama, wife, whatever. Yep. Um, what I see with Wendy now, and I'm sad, saddened by, is I keep saying this, number one, America and everybody got to stop with this whole mental health and that they care about mental health. Because we're witnessing her, Kanye, everybody having these breakdowns and ain't nobody reaching out to help. We laughing or we turning our backs. Wendy Williams to me, I told somebody, any woman, and I want you to pay attention to this because it's something similar, to, not similar, but if it happened to me on this of a scale, I could only imagine Wendy. Wendy Williams, and I hate when people also say karma coming back on. I think that's real yeah, nasty. That's, that's nasty to me for somebody to even say that. But anyway, Wendy Williams, is um, on the TV, her husband's her manager, gets her all the way there, and when you find out as a woman that your husband has got another, gotten another woman pregnant, yes. bought her a house two doors down from yours, <laughs> took your money, uh, bought her a car, yeah. right? Bought her a car. Yeah. Uh, yeah he went you just sat up here now, you leaving me, all of this stuff, and the public finds out. Yeah. It's it, hold on a second. I almost said... <laughs> Nigga, I would have a breakdown right, it's, that the whole world is watching my entire life fall apart right. and my man is cheating and taking my money and buying cars and houses for a chick who's living behind me right. and everybody knows, everybody's laughing and this and that, I'd have a mental breakdown. I think that girl had a mental breakdown and ain't nobody trying to save her. Yeah, especially when your job is dishing out that type of news about the other celebrities. And, and ain't nobody trying to... It comes at you and it's like, yeah, who do I go to when... That's so any woman, any woman would have a, we gonna have a breakdown when the world ain't watching, when we find out our man then bought a car, a house, had a baby. That's With our money, we gonna break down without the world watching. Now the world's correct. watching. And that's what makes her story so sad, which 
So how do you conduct your personal business? You being a face of the radio, you being out here in the streets, you being for the streets. Let me tell you what I do, If girl. that happened to you. I threaten the shit out of my husband every day. Nigga, if you do <laughs> anything like, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. But what would you do? Besides just the, I'd break down. How would you handle that? How would you still get up every day and, and, and handle that? So I'm going to tell you what you have to do. I always say, you got to, you take control of it. So my husband said, well, I'm always clear. I'm very open. There so uh, we were on a vacation and nobody knew me and the husband were having a real rough year. We were married seven years. We had a rough year. And, um, uh, and a friend of mine kept saying, y'all need to go to counseling because something had happened. I was like, ah. And so she was like, y'all need to go to counseling. Well, year eight, we go to Mexico to celebrate with some friends. And so he pissed me off and I cussed him out. I mean, I cussed him out. It was, so, I was so disrespectful, right? I mean, if disrespectful on a level 10, I was a level, a level 11 okay. on this trip. And I'm sure our friends heard. And so he ended up, I went to sleep because I had, in three hours, I kept saying, I had been up since 3.15 and I got home. We flew to uh, Cancun. I didn't get no nap. Now we out party, everybody having a good time. It's midnight. In three hours, I'm about to be up 24 hours straight with no nap. I tell him to take me home. He don't. I get into a nasty argument with him when we get back to the hotel. I mean, nasty. I'm disrespectful to the highest level. You called him a bitch ass nigga. Okay, thanks. Anyways, <laughs> that's how disrespectful it got. That's you know, 11. women don't we? That's the women. women. That's, 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 that's our favorite. But it's close, <laughs> right? It's close. But but hold on, it's close. But then, and that's what we do, right? Right. So I'm doing this. And I go to sleep because, again, I'm getting ready to be up 24 hours straight. He leaves. I tell him, you need to go home tomorrow, get a flight. We done. And I find out later that he comes up out of some chick's room. I know you lying. I talk about it on the radio. Oh, wait a minute. I talk about it. So, but that happened behind scenes. Nobody knew about that. Nobody. Hold on. They didn't know. But I'm, this is why I say, where well, you take control. So nobody knew, right? I didn't find out until a month later. Okay. Right? I don't find out until a month later. But what other people didn't know is that night after, we texting each other about, is this it? We going to get a divorce. Oh, wow. Right? I'm thinking this is it. The divorce. So he went in. So I don't find out until a month right, later. Wait, hold on. But I don't oh, find she out. She want me to know this story. She's she trying to know. help me out. Another black sister. Oh, okay. So story, okay. I know. So listen, so I don't know. So a month later, a friend of mine who tries to do this whole little, you know what? But she wasn't even, I don't even want to get there. <laughs> She tells me about him coming up out of the room. She said, ask so-and-so about your husband coming up out of the room. I said, what? Oh, she was trying so, to be shady? Yeah. Mm. So later on, I find out she told every friend but, but me. Wow. Everybody knew but me. It's the disrespect. So let me tell you what I did. I got on the radio, and I, guess what I always say? You ain't going to hold no shit over me now. I know that's right. I'm so I got on the radio story. and told everybody all about it, and to this day, I still talk about it. And that's what I think Wendy Williams, she talked, she touched on it, but I think you should just stand in it, face it. Own it, and then let everybody get that. But get, let me tell you, let them get I forgave. Jokes hold on, I forgave my and then husband. Keep it pushing. I forgave him. We went to counseling. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. When I saw a picture of the bitch, oh, oh, was she upgraded, downgrade? Yeah, I right, don't, don't answer, don't answer that, don't answer that. <laughs> hold on, my friends are really one of my friends. One of them ended up taking a picture of the chick because they said she ended up coming out when we had left, and she said she took a picture when she sent it to me. I said, okay, he ain't do nothing. But now had she, hold on a second, because I know my husband's type. Had she been a tall brunette with a nice ass body, a white girl, I would have been like, we would have been divorced. Right, that's questionable. Oh, that's his type. <laughs> that's your kryptonite. I know. I, okay. That's his kryptonite. That's your kryptonite. That's your kryptonite. So, but when I saw that old busted ass bitch that supposedly he came up out of her room, I went, he ain't do nothing. Oh, yeah, we get, we get past She's that. Black. Black but, but, yeah, when I saw the, the, the heels of her feet and the other things on her, I went, now she may have, Man, this is what said, somebody said, she may have, you know, Damn, Give him a little, you know. The feet, oh, okay, yeah. Gave him a little, you know. Yeah, just a little. From, from the feet, you saw that. From the, okay. She may have given him a little head, but she, they, he didn't hit yeah, it. Okay, okay. So, so it, it, it makes me wonder, um, when you see a situation like a Finesse Two Times, who made comments about, you know, he could have been talking about Erica Banks, he could have been talking about someone else, but he says, I like a woman uh. to be feminine. I don't want my girl to be like son and trying to son me, and I like to be the more dominant and my woman be the submissive compared to the other way around. When, when you see something like that, do you understand as far as, I know women are in a different world now, but do you understand where men come from when they say, hey, I'd rather my girl be feminine to the T, no kind of say you a simp, you, you know, start, 
you know, like you said, you argue, your argument was pretty hard. Like sometimes it's like, okay, wait a minute. You know, I'm supposed to be the one arguing with you and getting the one up, mm -hmm. but you got the one up on me. What are your thoughts on that as far I as? I agree with her. Okay, okay. I, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna please, tell you why. Please. So, um, you know, my mom, like I told my mom is very funny. And my mama had a mouth on her. My mother was, man, I grew up around a woman who, we didn't go to church. I didn't have a church going mama. Okay. Right? I mean, my mother was not that one. She was uh, a young mama. She was a teenage mama. She liked to uh, cuss. She cusses. Uh, all this stuff. But my mother has been married. She got married. She was married three times. And her last marriage was her most successful one. And what she told me was, when I got married, she said, don't cuss at your husband. She said, do your best to not cuss at your husband. I said, why not? And she said, you don't want him to cuss at you. Right. Right? And she said, so do your best to not, and try your best to stay a lady. Because right. you want him to see you as a lady. You're not trying to get him to see you as your homeboy, or this or that, you know, his homeboy, whatever. And so I try my best not to cuss now when you make me mad. I've, I've been told that it's it's very essential to a woman when we can always leave a pleasant leave as leave a pleasant mark on a stain on a man's brain. Like, oh, you know that didn't work, but she was so pleasant all the time. Like, oh, you know no. she she was not she was she didn't take no shit, but she was always the most pleasant person. No, like, hold up. I didn't say I was pleasant. I, well, I know that. <laughs> I know that. But that's my question. How hard people don't understand. We get as women, we get that we're so we should be more ladylike. But it's very difficult to do when you you know, especially when yeah. You but nowadays, truthfully, I'm not a big fan of like I used to always laugh when a girl be like, "Bruh, let me tell you." I was like, "I'm not your bruh, nigga. I'm not your <laughs> look." I just said, right. "Nigga, I'm not your bruh." But so, are you soft with your husband? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes or no? At times. Yeah, as you should be, hopefully. When do you At times. Okay, no she said, when do you get hard? Uh, no pun intended. Uh, when does he get hard? When are you harder? <laughs> who's, har who's harder? When we're in an argument. Okay. okay. When we're in an argument. You as know, you I may, I, you know, if we're in an argument, you know, I'm, again, I just told you, I, I grew up with a woman who, man, my mother's cussing used to be like on a level 10. It was great. I used to sit, let me tell you something. My mother was so funny and her cuss words were so good. We used to sit on the stairs and where she wouldn't even see us just so we could hear her gossiping with her friends and where she would be cussing. It was so great. Like, and I used to laugh and I started cussing. She, in four, she, she yeah. needed a podcast. She yeah. needed a podcast. She, need, she was that chick. So we used to sit on the stairs just to try to listen to her because it was so great. So, I, you know, I, I got a mouth on me. So, and I realized uh, I can't do what my mama did, though. I had to be. So, wait, she said, how you turn around? What's the secret? Um, the secret is that I want to keep my man. I want to keep my husband. I want to stay married. I want him to see me as a, a, a beautiful woman. I want him to see me as a helpmate. I want him to see me in a certain way. So I got to show some restraint, you know? So, I've now learned as I get older that patience, restraint, all of that stuff is really the, the strength, right? There you like, go. So when, when people have said... I remember reading or hearing some woman talking about submissive, being a woman being submissive takes more strength than we know. It takes more strength for us to shut our mouths and shut the hell up and, no, than we a, even know. That's facts. Now, I'm curious uh, from a woman's standpoint, from your standpoint, when you see, uh, if, if you're in Jada Pinkett's shoes and you see Will Smith go up there and slap a man in your honor, is that a turn on? No. Nah. That, wasn't a, that wouldn't have been a turn on for me knowing who Will Smith was and what I knew was at stake. Mm. And you, my man, and we, we live good in Hollywood and get respect because you are a $400 million man and you about to put that on the line, nigga. I'm mad at you ah. for actually going up there to slap him. I would have said you could have done it behind the scenes and not on TV. Ah, no facts. I would have I would have supported you to do it behind the scenes, behind the curtain, but on TV, you're threatening your whole reputation, our whole family's way of no i would not have cheered no that's not a turn on <laughs> a, so it, it's likely that she did not go home and rock his world i'm Possib sorry she possibly did not go home and rock his world she's probably was wondering no oh, okay. I, oh, oh damn oh, yeah damn. yeah I, 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 <laughs> oh, oh damn oh, i don't know damn. if i'm gonna rock my man's world for that now one, last night i just want to get your thoughts on um uh females female dominance in radio mm -hmm. uh you've been in radio for a while to where you see now that radio from the Cardis to the Megs, the Stallions, um, and everyone else, Glorilla's coming up and things like that. 
God dang it, I love Glorilla. See, come Glorilla on, Glorilla B. Mark, hey, she's so hard. She sound exactly like 50 Cent to me. When I listen to that beat, Bruh. that Bruh. beat sound like... She sound she, like many, many women. Right? <laughs> many she, women. What? <laughs> come, oh, my God. I'm like, did she get shot up a few me. times in the mouth? What's going on, Not this girl? Hurry, I mean, go hurry. ahead. How does that feel, though, to see women dominating radio in this day and age? How does that feel for you? I love it. It is great. Go. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I just hate... I'm going to tell you what I do hate. I hated what was going on where they were all fighting with each other and all that. I'm like, come on. Like, I... Because uh, I'm going to tell you why. It, there's a difference when... It's just a difference when the females do it. It feels so ugly and catty and and sad. And then because I, as a female, I know where we going to go. We Sometimes we go below the belt. And sometimes I just think that, yeah, no. Do it in your music. Show it off. You know, fight with each other on, on you know, what your, your stats are, your music or whatever. But when they start going below the belt, I hate that. It, looks, it, sounds, it seems very catty. seems very catty. Yeah, I mean, we can do better. Who's your favorite uh, female artist in the game right now? Uh, I do like Megan, but I do like Glorilla, y'all. I really do. I really do. I think she's so goddamn hard and just so like. <laughs> Shout out Glorilla for God real. dang it. I don't know what it <laughs> Come is. Come on, man. She talked that more. Yeah. Boy, I, that uh, voice. Who else would I say? She does, though. Y'all know that. Y'all know that girl do. That girl really does. I like her. Um, who else do I? Um, I can't think of somebody. There was somebody else that I can't even think of them right now, but whatever. Oh, I lo- I'm going to tell you who I really like. Dolce. Uh, Dolce is good. Okay, there you that go. girl's there talented. You go. There you She's go. Talented. There you go. There you go. Do you got anything you push him? Like, let's just yeah, take man, the time. Bro. If you got anything, I know bro, you got bro, your bro, podcast, bro. dope podcast. Do you got yeah, anything? Yeah, Dee Dee's dope podcast. I got the Dee Dee McGuire Foundation, which we're getting ready to do the Winter Wonderland party. You know, because of COVID, we didn't do the Winter Wonderland party for two years. Yes. And that's where, at, you know, the first year we made a snow in that building. So oh. um, I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and really just trying to expand and get into um, New York City right now. I'm oh, talk to him. <laughs> New York, New York. I want New York, and I want 100 cities. There you go, man. I want 100 it's cities. De- it, 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 it's definitely coming, man. Again, you're a pioneer in everything that you've done with this platform. Again, you said you had a vision board, and I'm just curious, what's at the top of that vision board? Um, 100 cities, number one. Okay. Um, the, the um, you know, owning my own company and owning the show. Amen. And when Amen. I say own the show, you know, I told you guys, I work for service broadcasting, but when I want to own it, I want to say that, you know what, this show is owned by where everybody who works for us works up under my company. Yes. Uh, I want to get into uh, producing movies. You know what I mean? I want to get into all of that. I, anything that's out there, I want. I just want to do all of it. Whatever's out there, I want to try to figure out how to maximize it because it's a goal. I came from nothing. I came from nothing. My mother was 16 years old having kids. And I'm the youngest of five, and we came from absolutely nothing. There are stories that I, I never tell about my family because I think that that's, um, I'm trying to be respectful of them. Um, but some of the stuff we've endured, my mom's endured, it'd be a great-ass movie. Y'all would be shocked. Y'all would be shocked because a lot of people get, they trip out on when they meet me because of the way I talk. I mean, we were in Seattle. I was in Germany. But a lot of people believe that when they see me at this level that I've always been at this level. And people don't know that it's been a struggle. It's been a fight. My mother was 16. We've been on welfare. Uh, she's lived in a, we lived in an apartment with two kids. She had five kids in a two-bedroom apartment. We've been put out. I mean, it's been, it's been hell. And to get here without an education, I have no college degree. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm telling you, it's... No, I mean... Uh, so the goals are there because I'm going, I got to, you know, I got to make my mama proud. I want to make me proud. And I want to make everybody who didn't come from nothing to know you can get to this point, right? Because I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. That shit was wooden as hell. And so I did, it wasn't silver. It wasn't gold. I had to work with no education. So putting flyers. I used to put flyers. That was my first job, putting flyers on cars when I was a kid. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, for anybody, any of your fans that want to tap in with you uh, or can connect with you, how can they do that? So you can hit me up. Um, you know, of course, I got Dee Dee in the morning on Instagram. I'm all over Facebook, social, all of that kind of stuff. Dee Dee's, uh, the Dee Dee McGuire Foundation, uh, Dee Dee's Dope Podcast. Hit me up at the station. You can listen in uh, Chicago. We're now on in Chicago, New Orleans, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, Rochester, 
Uh, we all over Louisiana. Shouts out to Louisiana. I love Louisiana. Louisiana. Shreveport, Baton Rouge. I mean, we are everywhere. Lafayette, everywhere. And so, so yeah, you can find me wherever. There you go. Or hit up my producer, my assistant, my assistant producer, Breeze. Breeze Shout out, Breeze. Real sneak in the game. Yeah, really Didi, we want to thank you so much for coming and sitting down with us. It was a definite pleasure. If you ever get the black men still don't cheat, black men don't lie. We're going to hold the fist up in the air in solidarity. All black men, put your fist up in the air. <laughs> no, we, we, we just thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to come sit down with us. You are a real life street star. Street stars, nigga. Oh.